Here we're going to talk about how to find the surface area of a rectangular prism. A rectangular prism is also sometimes called a right prism. So the formula for this um, problem, type of problem, is on the formula sheet, so you don't need to memorize it, but you do need to understand it. So it's surface area, SA, equals 2LW. When things are written like this, that means multiplication. So 2 times L, L means length, times W, W means width, plus 2 times L, length, times H. H means height, plus 2 times W, W means width, times H, which is height. And so we're going to explain to you what, what those mean, though. So first of all, let's figure out what a rectangular prism is. It is basically a box. That's a rectangular prism. Also sometimes called a right prism because these are all right angles. So you can see every face of this object is a rectangle. And so that's important because that is the key to this whole formula. Now when we talk about surface area, what does that mean? Remember when we were finding area of a rectangle, it was length times width. If you don't know how to find the area of a rectangle, you need to watch that video on Facebook. So we're going to use that concept when we're talking about surface area. All surface area means is that you have a three-dimensional object. So you don't just have one rectangle. You have a three-dimensional object in which all of the faces are rectangles. And you're going to find the area, the total area, of all of these faces together. So remember when we're talking about area, you can think of it as you're covering something or you're painting something. So if we wanted to paint this box, we would find the surface area of the whole box. So the top, the bottom, the sides, each of the sides, um, and add them all together. That's the total surface area. That's what you're doing in this formula. And so when we say the length, if you think about your box, and it's you know facing you this way, this is usually called the length. So that's what that means in this formula, the length of this side here. The width is going to be the length of this side. That is the width. So we have the length and the width. The height is going to be how tall it is, the length of this side. And so this formula is going to outline, we're just going to be looking at each face and taking the area of it. So remember, if we're looking at this front face, we just said that this is the length and this is the height. Remember, when you're doing the area of a rectangle, it's usually length times width. And that is really all we're doing here, but we're calling this the height, this side the height, to stay consistent for the whole three-dimensional object. But it's still the same thing. This, the length of this side times the length of that side. That's going to give us our surface area. So why do we have these twos in front of each of those? So the reason is because this front side is the same as this back side. This side is the same as this side. The front is the same as the bottom. And so we are only finding the area one time and then multiplying it by two. Now, if it makes more sense to you to find the area of the top, find the area of the bottom, and then add them together, you can do that. But recognize they're going to be the same area because we're going to find it by length times width. That's the same here, length times width. And adding them together, because we want the area of both of the sides, is the same thing as multiplying one of them by two. So here we have, so this first part of this, is length times width. So we're finding the area of the top, and that is also the same as the area of the bottom, so we're multiplying it by two. This part of the equation says length times height. So that, we're finding the area of the front and finding the area of the back. Those are the same, so that's why we're multiplying it by two. Width times height. So now if we look over here, remember we called this width and we called this height. So the area of this rectangle is going to be width times height. 
Now, obviously, that's not normally when we're just looking at a rectangle by itself. We always say, you know, length times width. But because we've labeled these width times height, that's what we're using in this part of the equation. So this side and this side are the same. That's why we have two of them. So we will do a couple of examples here. Let's say we have a rectangular prism and the length is, we'll say, 11 feet. The width is 9 feet and the height is 4 feet. What is the surface area of this? Let's draw this maybe a little bit straighter. So we're just going to follow the formula. So now we have the length, we have the width, we have the height. So we're just going to plug those numbers into this formula. Surface area, SA, is 2 times length. Length is 11 times width. Width is 9. Remember when we write things beside each other in parentheses, that means multiplication. Plus 2 times length. Length is 11 times height. Height is 4 plus 2 times width, width is 9, times height, height is 4. And then we just have to evaluate this. You can get your calculator out. Here you need to know the order of operations, so if you don't know that, you need to watch that video. So you need to know that we're going to do each of these multiplications first before we add them together. So 2 times 11 times 9, is 198. 2 times 11 times 4 is 88. 2 times 9 times 4 is 72. You add all of those together, you're going to get 358. Our units were in feet, so our answer is going to be in feet squared or square feet. Remember, any sort of area problem, your units are always in square units. So this would be the surface area for this rectangular prism, or this box, if you will. Let's say that they give us a problem that says a cube has a side of 7 inches. What's the surface area? So, remember, so one thing you need to know, remember a cube a cube is just a rectangular prism in which all of the sides have the same length. Just like the square is a special case of the rectangle, the cube is a special case of the rectangular prism where all the sides are the same length. So that's why they only need to give us the length of one side. Once we have the length of one side, we know the length of all of the other sides because they are all the same. So here we can use the same exact formula. I will show you a shortcut after we use the formula. So again, we're just going to plug the numbers in. 2 times length, length is 7, times width, width is 7, plus 2 times length, length is 7, times height, height is 7, plus 2 times width, width is 7, height is 7. If you do all of that, you're going to get so again, this is going to be 98 plus 98 plus 98 equals 294 inches squared, since this is in inches. So you can always use the formula. If you have a cube, if it makes sense to you, you can do a shortcut. Because remember that the area of each face of this is going to be the same. So you really only need to find the area of one side and multiply it by six because there are six sides and that will give you the surface area of a cube. So you can take any of them, any of the sides, and find the area. The area is going to be seven times seven is 49. That's the area of one side. There are six sides, so if you multiply that by six, you're going to get 294 inches squared. The same way we did it when we 
and I used the whole formula. This is just kind of a shortcut in the case of a cube. You find this, the area of one of the sides, multiply it by six, and that will give you the surface area. I'm going to take a pause, put one last question up. So here's a word problem in which they're going to test to see if you really understand what's going on in this formula. So you want to paint a bench that's in the shape of a box or a rectangular prism. You don't need to paint the bottom side because the bottom is going to be laying on the ground, so you don't need to paint that side. So what is the surface area of what you do need to paint? So let's say these are the dimensions. Uh, the length is 6 feet, the width is 2 feet, and the height is 3 feet. So what is the surface area of what we need to paint? So here, in the surface area of problem, remember what the first part of this is. So length times width is the top and the bottom faces, right? So when we find the length times width, we're finding the area of the top and we're finding the area of the bottom when we multiply that by two. So here we don't need to paint the bottom. So we don't need that, uh, that bottom face. So we're not going to multiply it by two because we don't need the bottom. We just need the top which is length times width. So it would just be length times width. We don't multiply it by 2 because we don't need both faces. We just need the top one. This part of the equation is length times height. So that's going to be these two, or sorry, the front face and the back face. Length times height is giving us the front and the back faces. Well, we do need to paint both of those. So length is 6, height is 3. This last part, width times height, is 2 times 3. So that's these two side faces, the area of both of those. So we do need to paint both of those. The width is 2, the height is 3. So here's where you need to understand what's going on in the formula. The first part is about the top and the bottom faces. The second part is about the front and the back faces. The third part is about the two side faces. And so when we don't need one of those, you need to know which one to take away. And again, if you do all of the math, you will get 60 feet 60 square feet is the answer to that problem.